but well this is like uh, what's the max depth of this water Just about eight feet okay so everything's kind of in the same yep biome yeah exactly so like have you, you noticed in systems like this like you know the montagues and capulets like the bass don't really hang around with them pike too much or they pretty much I yeah it, like, oh yeah you yeah, just I, said I they segregated themselves literally <laughs> yeah. i was like is that a common thing or is that like an anomaly no it's pretty common out here definitely common so nice you're reeling it pretty fast right Remember? yeah okay yep i vary it you know one retrieve i'll do fast next one kind of slow so One of the things I wanted to do today is take you guys out to a lake and show you something that's starting to gain more popularity amongst anglers all across the United States. Most people go out and they, you know, they go after musky, walleye, smallmouth, largemouth, but not northern pike. Most guys, when they catch a northern pike, they get a little upset sometimes yeah, when some, they catch pike. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. but a lot of times, you know, when you work all week hard, you go to your favorite lake and you fish, you don't you know, you don't want to go out there and spend a lot of time wasting time. You yeah. want to catch fish, right? Yeah. So the, the cool thing about this is I, if you do some research, you can find up what I call a little backup lake. So you can go out any day, you go to your favorite lake and you're not catching them, you go to your backup lake and it might be one of the best days you've ever had. And that's what we're on today. We're on this lake right here is maybe 100, 200 acres. That's one of the things you want to look for. You want to look for a small lake. It's 100, 200 acres, maybe about eight feet deep or Vice versa, you look for a lake that's even smaller, like a 100 acre lake, maybe 20 feet deep, 30 feet deep, because it's gonna be real easy for you to go out and find those fish. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty simple to go out in a lake like this that has a healthy population of northern pike, a lot of big northern pike, and also has a lot of uh, a lot of forage. But the key thing is a river system. You gotta look for a lake that has a river. There's actually a river system that runs through here uh -huh. because it produces, you know, a lot, it's bringing current through here yeah. and a lot of new forage for these fish to feed on all the time. So that's definitely one of the keys to finding a great little backup lake. And that's interesting you said that too, because like I know like just in, in where I fish in Tennessee and it's like some of the fishery studies I've done, I was even curious when we were talking about the size class of fish you'd caught in this lake. It's a small body of water and it's not very deep. The ceiling's really low. But as soon as you said there's an incoming river, as soon as you add current to a, a, mm -hmm. an equation with a system like this, the carrying capacity goes up exponentially. Oh yeah. Like the ability for it to like hold, manage, grow larger fish of all species, even though it's shallow, that will like magnify the effects of that tenfold. And that's where you find those gyms. And that's a great determinant. Mm -hmm. Like you might have a little lake that doesn't have a river system that feeds it that might be good. But if you can find one like this that has a river system flowing into it, like yep. automatically, that's oh, something yeah. that like that's a red thumb. That's absolutely yourself. the cool thing about this. Lake, it's a sleeper lake. I bet you nobody has fished this lake all summer long. I've been out here several times. I'm the only boat. <laughs> I never see anybody out here. People uh, just don't even think of they drive right by this lake and they never fish it. Yeah, it's it. nondescript. Yeah, it's that little pond off yeah. the interstate. See, one of the things I love doing. I love throwing spinner baits because it's a simple technique. Anybody can do it. You know, it's not, you don't have to, I mean, live bait can be great this time of year, but it's, it's a lot of work. And to me, the less work, the better, you know. I want to go out and start fishing right away. You're not having oh, yeah. to rig up, you know, a sucker or something like that. So, and out here, there's just so many fish that you, you would, you would be changing your bait every five, every five minutes or so because, you know, if you were using suckers or live bait. Well, yeah, they just tear it shut. Yeah. Well, basically all it is out here, there's submerged weeds. Like I said, the water is about a foot high right now because of all the rain we've had. But normally, this, if you look along the shoreline, you can see all that duckweed. The, no, the whole lake normally looks like that. The whole lake is usually all really? duckweed, yeah. Besides where the river channel runs. And like I said, sometimes I have to come out here and just cut past with a big motor. Then I wait the next day for the current and the wind to move it all. Then I can come out and actually have channels that I can fish. But right now, they're pretty much cruising everywhere because of the cloud conditions, you know. So that their noses aren't stuck down in the weeds, they're not down deep. These fish are out cruising right now. I mean, we should be able to catch a few of them pretty soon here. So, but yeah, there's it's, there's normally a lot of weeds right here, but the the you'll see in a little bit, you'll start to see tons of weeds just about a foot beneath the surface. Great, yeah. just a straight, easy, yep, just a straight retrieve. Yep. Uh, we mix it up sometimes. Sometimes I'll do a little faster, sometimes a little slower. You know, just let the fish tell you what they want every single day. Every day is a little different, but. A lot of times, I use my two choices of baits is spinner bait or buzz baits. Uh, if the water was a little bit warmer, 60 degrees or warmer, I'd be throwing a buzz bait. But now that fall's coming and the temperature's you know, about 58, 59 degrees, uh, spinner bait's pretty much the best choice right now. Well, that's interesting too because, like, in the absence of uh, topography and stuff like that, like, basically, there's not really any structural elements to this except just the basin, right? right. There's not really any nope. particular humps, no, there points. Isn't. 
And anything that is existent is so shallow that it's matted by the weeds, correct? Right, yep. So that's like, that's one of those habitats where, you know, nature uses what it's given. And so they would scatter, right? Yeah, all fight. I mean, there's not really anything that will particularly direct them in any one area. Exactly. They're just utilizing the entire habitat. The nice thing, too, it doesn't matter the time of year. It could be spring, summer, you know, or fall. It's very easy to find a fish on a lake like this. Just yeah, because, like, where you talk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of got them cornered. Yep. <laughs>